and welcome to uh, another installment of the Clear Insight webinars. And so today, uh, as you will have signed up for and uh, will be looking forward to, no doubt, our webinar today is about the all-new AI-infused IBM Cognos Analytics. And we are very excited about this new installment of Cognos Analytics. Clear Insight, of course, has been a partner of IBM for many years. Uh, on a number of different solutions with IBM and the this new version of Cognos Analytics is definitely something that is a leapfrog industry and why we wanted to get the news out of the gate as soon as possible. So perhaps one of the questions, we will have questions on the webinar and perhaps one of the questions I should have asked is uh, what does AI stand for? And no doubt many of you are uh, thinking artificial intelligence, and so you wouldn't be far off the, the mark with that. But IBM really coined the term augmented intelligence, and so it is uh, artificial intelligence built into the solution, um, and we will talk a lot more about that as we go along. But um, IBM refers to it as augmented intelligence because, as we all know, um, we are not at a stage where we're comfortable just letting uh, the machines make the decision. We want uh, human interaction to it. And so this is the beauty of the new Cognos Analytics. So welcome to our webinar. And uh, now our little agenda, we're going to introduce a little bit about Clear Insight. Some of you on the line know us well, uh, others not so much. Then we're going to talk about the road bumps in the analytic journey. We're going to get into uh, how AI can transform that. Uh, a little overview of Cognos Analytics 11 and then the exciting part, getting into a couple of demos and Q&A. And as I see the Q&A there, I want to mention that um, the uh, Q&A is there for you to ask throughout the webinar. So please, uh, as you see in your GoToWebinar administration console, there is questions. Please enter your questions in as we go along for the webinar. So just quickly, Clear Insight I mentioned we've been IBM partners for a long time. We're partners of a number of other key solutions as well. But our expertise and our, our objective is about leveraging your business capacity to drive better outcomes, specifically around budgeting and planning, forecasting, uh, month-end close, board reporting, uh, external reporting. Then we're into management reporting and business intelligence and profitability and modeling. And really, our webinar today is, for the most part, going to touch on uh, panels three and four here. And that's what we're excited about today. Uh, another way of talking about what we do here at Clear Insight is using the IBM Analytics lifecycle. And some of you may have seen this. But essentially, on this analytics lifestyle, we start with planning. You do your annual plan. You do uh, set up that annual plan and have many people involved and we support clients, many clients with this with planning analytics, uh, the old version of TM1 uh, is key there. Then we get into descriptive and diagnostic where you're analyzing what you do and we help you with Cognos Analytics and some other solutions in that space. That's what we're going to talk about today. And then beyond the what and why happened, uh, then what will happen next? in the predictive and what should we do are the next stages in the life cycle that we also help with as well. So if you're in the business of trying to solve and address any of these issues, um, we are happy to talk to you about that. So that's us. What about you? The pressure is on. The pressure is on for you, whether you're here from IT or you're here from uh, sales, from finance, from marketing, whatever department you're in, um, the pressure is on you to make decisions better and make them faster, to collaborate better and more efficiently with your peers, and ultimately what for? To give better customer satisfaction, whatever line of business you're in, to drive profitability, to uncover risks um, that are evident in the marketplace today. And so the expectation is that you're going to do this faster and better than you did in the past. And we can't do that without the right information and the right insights around that. But there are speed bumps to this, and this is where you're going to see some of these uh, issues that may, no doubt, if you've started down this journey, are going to affect you. Um, do you have inaccurate data? If the data is not right, you can't pull the right data together 
from multiple data sets, then it doesn't matter what you do, you don't have the data to answer the information. And so that is, uh, of course, the underlying foundation of good analytics. But then you've got the expectations for better visualizations, and uh, we don't want those uh, old, stale um, bar charts and some things like that maybe just don't cut it anymore, and we need new visualizations for uh, new things, and you're going to see some of that today. Some of you may have tried to address this, and maybe um, you just went after some one of the fancy new uh, shiny tools available in the marketplace for quick um, end-user self-service BI to try and do great visualizations, but, but quickly came into a dead-end street when you realized that it wasn't linked to the proper data sets or the data was inaccurate, and again, you're going nowhere. So these are key issues that remain in the business. So it's about rapid, accurate operational decisions. That's what we're trying to do, and that's what you need to do. So let's talk about the, the key underlying issues. Is there any data missing in your environment? How can we address that? Is, there, uh, is the information correct? Um, it's there, but it might not be incorrect. Uh, is there information that's misleading or are numbers misrepresented? And again, with one version of the truth, if you don't have that, then different people can be looking at the same set of numbers and making different interpretations uh, because they've used different calculations, etc. So these are key things uh, that underline the foundation of getting your analytics journey right. This is where augmented intelligence comes in. And this is where the new Cognos Analytics can start to help out, smooth out these things. Those issues, those speed bumps, those are things that we've all dealt with that we've been, uh, over the many years, have been doing in a manual uh, method um, to try and fix. Um, but the onslaught of data is so hard to keep up with that now. And to do that manually just isn't cutting it anymore. Um, that's where AI can come in and make the data more accessible, help you scale, uh, and begin to apply machine learning everywhere. And so, again, this is the target of Cognos Analytics 11. So as we think of AI and augmented intelligence, we're looking for solutions to tell us about the information and to drive more insights on the information. But if those insights aren't useful, it's no good. You know, I've, I've worked with solutions in the past that will claim augmented intelligence, artificial intelligence, and it will come back with, hey, you know what you need to do? You need to increase revenue and reduce expense to improve margin. Well, that's true, but that's not very useful. If I didn't know that, we wouldn't be in business. So we're looking for the solution to go out and uh, uncover issues in the data that I otherwise wouldn't know. AI, as I mentioned in Cognos Analytics, the old systems just told you what happened. Now with Cognos Analytics and AI infused, we're going to learn why did it happen. And that's going to change and transform the business intelligence marketplace. We could do that in the past if we had um, key market researchers and analysts who could analyze the data um, in special ways for us, but now with the tool, it's done to do it for you. So it's built for ease of use, it's built to design to make you even faster, and to help you uncover the truth. Over on the right here, this is the exciting thing. You'll see that, that the AI is embedded into Cognos Analytics throughout it now to help you with the data prep, the data exploration as a self-service user, for building your dashboards, developing a story that then can be presented to others in the business and collaborated and shared about. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen now, and these are the visualizations I was talking about, these new types of visualizations. Just a few other little tidbits before we go into the demo. Some of the exciting things you're gonna see are a whole new custom color palettes that are available. Um, one thing I'm not is a graphic artist, and sometimes you spend your most time trying to get the right colors to match, and you're never happy with it. The new Cognos Analytics has color palettes that automatically align uh, the colors that blend together 
Uh, you can put custom palettes in, so you're using your custom um, color codes, etc., from your business in there. The new visualizations to understand the data, uh, different widgets that can be brought into the dashboard, uh, of course, um, geographic and other items. And then once you're done, whether you want to set it up to have the reports automatically sent to you when new data uh, arrives or to burst out to thousands of users, the broadcasting ability is all built in there. We're going to see about dashboarding and how dashboarding can be done in a self-service way, how your insights can be shared, and how augmented analytics and insights flow into the dashboards. We're also going to see in the guided layout, we're going to see how you can build uh, your professional corporate reports, pixel perfect reporting, as IBM has always called it, um, with Cognos Analytics. So it's exactly what you see is what you get, whether it's to be seen on the screen, uh, to be printed out to PDF, um, or shared in other ways on your mobile devices, etc. Um, on how these can be built, even things like this third bullet here, so that you can set it up by percentage. So depending on what uh, resolution of screen the reports are being looked at, it's there. So you've got the simple dashboarding, you've got the self-service, but you've also got the full enterprise strength corporate reporting uh, building mechanism in there. Once you've got the reports and you've done your insights, IBM has uh, collaborated with Slack and is able to share, uh, allow you to share your insights on Slack as well, um, integrated into your business to make it more collaborative and more friendly there. The scheduling, we just mentioned that uh, earlier, but the built-in scheduling is there, all very easy. Of course, no pro programming in any of this to build up your schedules for delivery of reports. On the administrative side, um, what used to be the admin console is now built into Cognos Analytics where I can control my connections to all my databases, I configure my, my different settings in the cloud environment, manage my multi-tenancy, manage my end user licenses, who has access to everything and all my security it's all accessible. Of course, this is all based upon what security level you have as you log into the system. And then lastly, before we go to demo, just to mention as well, um, you don't have to open up Cognos Analytics to do that. There's strong built-in APIs so that you can take uh, these dashboard-like components and embed them into your own um, web interfaces and your own web applications as well. So. Uh, making it accessible uh, to all your users in a variety of ways. All right, now we're going to go on to demo time, and I'm um, excited to have uh, Vivian and Bob from our organization here, and I'm going to turn it over to Vivian now, who is going to walk you through the first elements of the demo. Good. So uh, today I will present the new, some of the new features for dashboard in Cognos Analytics 11.1. First of all, I will build a traditional dashboard from Cognos. And I will choose the tab layout. As Yen mentioned before, these are old visualizations Cognos provided. And uh, sunburst, spiral, Driver analysis, those things are the new features, new visualizations. I will bring line and column to my widget. And this time, I want to have my customer loyalty data. And uh, I will bring the data in. I want to show my sales revenue and quantity of sold by year. So first I drag my year to X axis and then my income, my quantity sold. So my dashboard is ready.
click any of it, you can see the data is showing up. And this is the quantity sold and the income from 2017. If you want to get detail of the data, we still have the ability to see it. So here are the aggregated data. However, if you click this tab, it will show the source data in details. So you can see customer name, loyalty number, country, province, city, etc. Also, you have the ability to provide, to give you some insight of your data. So with this insight, it gives you the average of your quantity sold. And also you can see the variances between the average to each year. And this kind of is a very straightforward analysis. If you're not happy with the color, we still have the ability to change it. So far, IBM, this one, used the default IBM palette, which is IBM palette one. IBM provided eight system palettes here. And you also can build your own palette. For example, this is the one I built by, from, by myself. And you can change it to whatever you want and save it. So this give people a lot of freedom for the color. Another part is this layout positioning. So basically IBM provided two options. One is relative, one is absolute. And also with relative, you also can change the size of your printout. For example, I may print out in letter size or legal. So this will be the, the printout size of your chart. And here, IBM also provided ability for color consistency. So if you have multiple widgets on one tab, it can co provide consistent color to all the widgets. But if you don't want this option, you can take, turn it off. And I also want to bring the filter here. So this, if I choose Canada, these are all Canada data. And here you can see country included Canada. And now I bring another, I build another tab. So this time I am tired of build it from scratch. So I decided to use my existed build report. This is a dashboard we built before, and this also customer loyalty data, but it showed up by quarter, and also it's a stack column with the product line. So I want to copy this dashboard to my widget to my new dashboard. What I do is, So it shows up in my pin in my pins and I drag it You may notice the filter is also here so it's automatically filtered by by Canada is because I put my filter to all tabs so this data is supposed to be Canada data and if you don't like the, the stack column, you also have the ability to change it. It's pretty handy to change and you go to all visualization, you can find all your choices here. So for example, I want to change the column, do will change the column. And I also can change to table. 
In this case, it's, it's a regular cross-tab report. So now I'm pretty happy with my dashboard. I will pass it to, to my coworker, Bob. Great, thanks Vivian. So I just need a moment to get myself settled here, get things more open. Great, so I'll, I'll start from the same spot where Vivian, you were you working there. And I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a different approach. So let's say we wanna talk about some of the other features they have now in Cognos Analytics. In particular, there's, I like the assistant. So let's go back to the welcome screen. And let's say, you know, we wanted to, uh, you know, start a new, a new dashboard. So we'll go down here to the bottom right. You can say new dashboard. And maybe I'm not as familiar with the data as, as, as Vivian is or other folks. So I'll use one of the guides. You know, I think I, that looks nice. I'll start with that as a guide. And it's now walking me through a couple of simple uh, simple screens to help me uh, help me get to building a, you know, whatever it is I'm trying to build. So first thing I want to do is I'll select the data source and I'll just do the same one that, that we've been working with here. So we'll start with our, our loyalty program information and I can, I can browse the information. I can see what we've got access to. I could drag and drop different pieces of this onto the canvas and even I have icons here to let me know are these, you know, words? Are these, you know, here we've got map data points. Are these numbers? What are they? And even if I don't know, well, this is where the, where the assistant comes in. So I just click on the assistant. And the assistant's going to be able to say, well, how can I help you? Well, what data do I have access to? Show me the data. Okay. Well, I see it's, I've got this one, and that's the one I have, I want to use. So if I click on that one, now I'm going to see a list. It's already pulled in from the file. What columns are there? And does some? It already is doing some some statistical analysis of, of the data that's in that that data set. <clears throat> so for me, I want to look at this. By, I want to look at revenue. Revenue is important. So I click on revenue, and it shows me some details about how many rows are there, how many distinct values, min, max. Uh, so those, that's helpful to know. And what's interesting is that it's, uh, it's guiding me through a conversation. And you'll see, I just started with picking some data that I may or may not be familiar with. And it's already telling me I can look at what influences revenue. So now if I say, well, yeah, well, I'm interested. What does influence revenue? So here are a number of different factors that influence revenue. And I can click on one to get some more detail. So what if we pick, you know, say quantity sold? Now, you'll see they have a different number of options along the bottom here. So now what it's doing is it's actually coming up with visualizations on the fly to help me understand what is the relationship between quantity sold and revenue. I like this one. So maybe I'll just drag this one onto my canvas. Just plop that right on there. And just as, as you saw with Vivian, you can kind of you know, got, align it to, to the different guides. Um, maybe want to make a duplicate of it. So I can use any one of these items here and I can say, you know, duplicate it. And I'll put one over on the, on the other side over here. Kind of snaps into place for me. But for this one over here, I, you know, I'd like to see data. I'm kind of a, a, I'm kind of a numbers person. So I want to just change a visualization. Could be a number of different things here. I look at all my visualizations. Let's just put it right back to, to a table. So I can see the actual data underlining, underlining those items. But I'm kind of curious now what else drives drives revenue or, you know, we're looking at customer loyalty. So what other pieces do we have here to play with? Um, and Vivian also did mention some of the new visualizations that we have in the tool. So let's look at those. So I look, look on visualizations. The spiral and the sunburst 
are pretty powerful in the sense that they they not just use uh, you know they're not uh, they're used in the AI piece, but they also have predictive properties. So I just drag the drag it on the canvas. So it walks me through a nice little wizard here to say, well, what do you want to choose as your target? Uh, here I'm curious about well, what drives customer lifetime value. I could choose any of these, but up here I'll choose customer lifetime value, and let's drag it onto the, the canvas here. Now what this is doing is on the fly, it's saying well, these are the factors that drive customer lifetime value and statistically what, how much or how, what that relationship is. So maybe I'm familiar with, with, uh, with predictive analytics, maybe I'm not, but for, for folks that are, they've got the detail around the quantities that they may want to want to investigate. For folks that aren't, this is just exploration. So it supports both, both those use cases. So I kind of collapse that down and it's going to end up on my canvas here. You know, and I, I also have a few options to, to increase my screen size here. I can just make this full screen. So that's handy to know. And if I was working on a tablet, this would be my experience. So I can develop these things over the web and then with the responsive design that we have here, it would be the same tool available over any tablet or phone or, or, or a browser experience. But since we're still, still doing develop, some development here, so we've got our spiral. I also want to look at the sunburst. So we add our sunburst. Just drag that onto the canvas. And similarly, we get a nice little wizard that will pop up and say, well, what do you want to, you know, what do you want to investigate? And I'm investigating customer lifetime value. so. Just like with the spiral, I can drag on customer lifetime value or I can drag on any of them. And you'll see it's, it's actually similar to the spiral in the sense that you see what is being driven, what the target is in the middle, and around it you see the contributing factors. What I like about the sunburst is that on the first visual impact, you get a feel for what combinations of factors are driving it. So the sunburst is... It's, it, it's answering the question, what drives customer lifetime value? And as you grow out from the rings, you see what are those different factors? And there's different reasons you might want to do this. This, this is going to be a big influence on marketing campaigns or reviewing marketing campaigns to see if, if they're effective or how you want to tweak them down the road. Um, also, having other, other ways to visualize the same information is helpful. So maybe I want to look at the, a tree diagram to say, well, how what are really the relationships and how strong are the relationships between different pieces of these, these components or these, these, these um, drivers. And then you can also say in a different, different way, what are the rules and how many rows, how many records do these things apply to? So if I look at this one down here, I see, well, I have, you know, if we look for items where uh, quantity sold is, uh, between is two but less than three, and the coupon response is they responded to coupon one and coupon two. Well, it's 18% of our records fall, you know, meet that criteria. So that helps us say, well, this is something we might want to consider to use as a rule when we're defining some of our marketing campaigns going forward. But I still like the sunburst, so I'll go back to the visual, I'll collapse that down, and now I've got that on my canvas. And I want to play with the formatting a bit here, so maybe I'll just, you know, snap this to the guides, resize it a little bit, and I want to start adding some titles. So I can just add a title here to say customer lifetime value sunburst, and all of these things here I can just click on and I'll get a nice little we get a visual that comes up over here, and I can add titles. And for, for some of the data, it's actually going to come up with a title for me. So here it's showing me the revenue by quantity sold. And here we're going to say, we're going to add a, a title over here. So same as it's been able to figure out that's revenue by quantity sold. I'll leave it as that, and this one down here. I'll put this in, and I'll say, well, this one I want it to be This one, I'd like it to be a spiral. So 
So I come back in here, click on the title, and I can say Spiral. Or if you'll follow the other one, Customer Lifetime Value Spiral. So I could also add in some filters. So maybe I want to filter this by country. I can drop on some filters along the top here. Maybe I'll zero in on, on three countries here. You'll notice all of these visualizations change when I add these filters. So if I were to change any of the filters, they're always going to be responsive uh, on whatever device to these different different items. But now I'm you know, I'm getting to the end, so I kind of want to save my work here. I can save it, uh, share it with my team, or share it just individually. Here I'm just going to I'll share it in a folder and say it's uh, you know Bob predictive dashboard. Just save that, and I can kind of get out of edit mode, make it full screen. And then here's my, here's my visual. So folks may have, you know, older versions of Cognos BI, and if they're interested in, in you know, upgrading to, to Cognos Analytics and doing this kind of thing. A lot of the same framework manager packages or, or infrastructure that you've got can just kind of be plugged into this this uh, updated user interface. So there, it does that does make it easier. There are some advantages of, of updating some of that, that some of that plumbing, but the the real benefit here is in the user interface because I'm developing it once for uh, once on the web and I can use it. Uh, tablets or or online without really installing any apps. So it's also a thin client. You don't need to install anything for this. So that's what I wanted to show. I guess I'll pass it back to Ian. All right, fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. That uh, and Vivian for your um, demonstrations of those. <clears throat> that's excellent. I just have two last little slides I want to go through, and I know. Um, I think you guys answered a couple of questions as you were going through it, but if anybody else has any questions, um, I'll get Muskan to let me know um, once I finish these couple of slides. So put in any questions that you might have in the meantime. <clears throat> so what I just wanted to touch on is you've seen all of this, and you may be saying, wait a minute, do I have to sell my first board to get Cognos Analytics? There's a lot there. Um, a lot involved in actually the integration of multiple solutions from IBM in the past. If you knew Watson Analytics, um, you would recognize some of Watson Analytics in, in what we showed today, and that is because IBM has integrated that in, and you're getting the power of Watson Analytics uh, in Cognos Analytics as well. So <clears throat> you're getting a lot there with multiple different packages of the cloud version. Uh, beginning as low as $15 uh, a seat per month. So this is something that IBM has made price so that it can be available to organizations, small and large. You don't have to be a huge organization to take advantage of this. And ourselves as Clear Insight, we work with all sizes of organizations. So we'd love to uh, connect with you if your uh, interest is tweaked and you can see how you could leverage this in your uh, environment, then please reach out to me and I can give you a specific quote on this. The other thing is, you know, you may have other products in your environment or maybe you had heard of other products or thinking of other products, you know, some uh, that have a low cost of entry like Power BI and like, well, I think this is going to do the trick for me. Um, but you know what, it really is missing so many other things. Um, and once you get into an enterprise-wide edition of Power BI, the costs start to really climb, and you're still missing out on a lot of the augmented intelligence and the bursting and numerous other things. And then, you know, perhaps other solutions that uh, give you beautiful visualizations, which they do, but they don't go deep enough. They don't do the enterprise-wide. They don't create the collaboration that you need um, and don't have the AI. So given what IBM has done, um, with Cognos 11 is amazing, and then 
The icing on the cake is they've made it very price uh, competitive uh, to let you get into the game with um, AI with augmented intelligence. So we'd love to connect with any of you. Um, and perhaps the best way to see it is if you saw it with your own data. And so if you're interested in a proof of concept or a demo with your own data, we're happy to connect and, uh, and take some time to do a private webinar or meeting with you with your own data. So with that, uh, we give thanks for your attendance today. And I'm not sure if any additional questions did come in. Muskan, is there any more questions beyond what was asked uh, already and answered through the webinar? Um, yeah, Ian, we do have a couple of questions here. So uh, one of them says, this looks great, but how can I see it with my own data? Sure. Oh. So, yeah, Ian, I think I can take that one there. So uh, Ian, just like you said there, if, I mean, if you can, if folks want to provide a sample set of data, we're happy to show you a tailored demo with your own data. And you know, Ian can help you set that up. But that's, and that's always something that I think folks see a lot of value in, is being able to see these kind of visuals with their own data to give it some context around something that they probably can't do today. Perfect. Good. Mm -hmm. Was there any others there, Muskin? Uh, yes. Uh, we do have a question here. How do we connect this with our different data sources? Sure. I'll take that one, too. So there are many ways to, of connecting to all the different data sources folks may have. Uh, we do have a services team, and they're experienced at linking into a variety of different tools. So we can provide guidance and, and assistance wherever is needed to, to link into data sources uh, throughout the enterprise. Okay. And we have the last one there that says, we've tried to put in AI before, but it was too difficult. How is this easier than other tools? That's a good question. So uh, here the AI is available in multiple ways for different levels of experience. So there's the conversation with the assistant. There's some guided exploration. helps folks you know, figure out well, what influences different items. Uh, it helps. There's visualization uh, guidance. You know, how can you show the data visually? What visuals are most, most appropriate? And also data. So if you want to look at pulling the data set from something you're looking at, that's always available. Um, but I think the biggest one I like is the insights. You know, throughout all the objects, insights provide meaningful AI insights that, you know, within a specific context. So it's, it's geared toward the specific view or object or data that someone may be looking at to give them something that's, um, you know, very, it's, it's very specific to what they're looking at here. It's not just a general case. Okay, thanks for that, Bob. Was that <clears throat> any more, Muskin, or was that it? Uh, no, that's all, Ian. Okay. Okay, well, terrific. Um, we really appreciate everybody uh, who has been on the webinar with us today, and hopefully you found it of great value, and we look forward to um, sharing it with you directly and, as was asked, with your own data as well. So with that, we will... Uh, shut down the webinar and give thanks uh, to you again for joining and to the rest of the Clear Insight team for helping out. Thanks so much and have a good rest of your day.